The graph on the right shows the plumber's charges when called to repair a boiler job. What is his initial call out fee? Okay, so his initial call out fee, what is it? Mental? Okay. So, so what happens is, if you look at the graph, when he spends no hours on the job, zero hours on the job, how much money has he already made? 30 euro. So before he spent any time on the job, he's already spent 30 euro. This means that his initial call out charge must be 30 euro. How much does he charge for a job that lasts three and a half hours? If your job lasts three and a half hours, what you need to go is you need to go to three and a half hours, you go all the way across until it hits the line, then you go all the way across here. It lies in be halfway between 90 and 120. What's halfway between 90 and 120? If two blocks is worth 30, how much is one block worth? If two blocks is worth 30, one block is worth 105. So it's your 105. Okay. If he charges 135, how many hours has he worked? Okay, where is 135 located? Can anybody tell me? Yeah. In between 120 and 150. So you go to 135, you go all the way across till you hit the line, then you go all the way down. This job takes how many hours? Five hours. Okay. Uh, does he charge, does his charge form a linear sequence? What's another word for a linear sequence? Anybody? Arithmetic series, okay? Oh, uh, and also spell arithmetic properly would be a good idea. Alright, so let's, let's figure this out, okay? Uh, zero hours is 30, right? One hour is, anybody? One hour is worth how much? Sorry? 45? Uh, one hour, we actually haven't quite figured out what is the hourly rate, have we? Can anybody in the class tell me how would you figure out what the hourly rate is to make your diagram more accurate? It's very hard to pick it off. So, how much did a three and a half hour job cost again? A hundred and? Five. Okay, now remember, how much of that is not included in the hourly rate? How much of that is not included in the hourly rate? 30. 105 minus 30 equals 75. Do you got it? 75 euro is how much three and a half hours cost, isn't it? Divide 75 by three and a half and you can find out the hourly rate. What's the hourly rate? It's not an even number at all, is it? 21.43 okay so 21.43 per hour so guys does this mean that every hour how much does the how much does the number go up by every hour every hour it goes up by 21 euro 43 cent it increases the same amount each hour doesn't it and if a sequence increases the same amount each time, is it linear? It is. Okay? This is a linear sequence because, can anybody tell me? For part four, how would you explain part four? This is a linear sequence because, two, of two reasons. Because the graph of time versus across the graph of time versus charge is a straight line. If it's a straight line, it's always linear. 
also the also what do we say here the difference also the difference between each term is 21 euro 43 cents that's the difference between one hour and two hours isn't it you get charged 21 euro 43 cent extra for every hour so that's going to be the difference between not and one hour one and two hours three and four hours okay so number five use the graph to work out what the plumber charges for each hour of actual work we actually did that already didn't we what did we do we said that we used the answer of part two we said it costs 105 euro for three and a half hours including the call out charge take away the call out charge you have 75 euro 75 euro 75 euro divided by three and a half says that's 21 euro 43 cent per hour does what number do you think this one is here that number there how high do you think that is 50 something right or 40 something but what number is that it's 51 can anybody tell me 30 plus one hour 0.43 can anybody tell me what this number for two hours should be what would be the charge for two hours multiply 21 multiply 21 43 by two that's two hours of work add on your charge and it should be 72 euro 86 cent is that around 72 euro yes it is that's how you do it okay so we did that now it does say use the graph to work it out so you just have to take a rough estimate of what each one is wouldn't you and then work it out investigate if the slope of the line is the same as the rate of change we now have to get the slope of the line does anybody remember how to get a slope of a line what's the slope of a line formula can anybody tell me we did this in which chapter do we do this in the geometry chapter the slope of the line is y2 minus y1 over anybody x2 minus x1 pick two points on the line that you know where they are so let's pick this point here is easy isn't it what point is that zero 30 call that x1 y1 uh, let's pick this point here. What point is this? 5 and 135. Now, let's see what happens. Slope equals, what's y2? y2 is 135. So y2 is 135. Okay, so it's going to be 135 minus 5, or sorry, minus 30, divided by uh, 5 minus 0. So what is 135 minus 30 divided by 5? It's going to be, and what's 105 divided by 5? Twenty one euro. Okay. So that's twenty one euro. Now, this disagrees with what we did before, doesn't it? So did we make a mistake before or what happens? Okay, so let's have a look and see what might have happened here. Okay. Three and a half hours is 105 euro okay so we said three and a half hours is 105 euro if the slope is 21 three hours is how much sorry multiply 21 by three and a half guys And then add on 30. So, as it turns out, 
what we thought was 105 wasn't actually 105 it was just under needed okay so that's the difference between a doing it by algebra and doing it by eyesight remember i said that's 105 it's actually slightly below it so if i was to really 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 zoom in on it it would be just slightly below it okay here is is the uh, is the, uh, the slope of the line the same as the rate you charge for an hour's work? It should be. Usually it is. But in this case, because there was a slight error made on that being 105 as opposed to 103.5, there is a slight disagreement, isn't there? There's a slight disagreement between 21.4 and sorry, 21.43 and 21.4. <coughs> if the work lasted 10 hours, use the sequence to work out the charge, what the charge would be. Okay, 10 hours. If the sequence starts off at 30, and that's for no hours of work, we have to figure out what 10 hours of work will be. Okay, keep adding on 21 each time. What's one hour of work? Anybody? 51. What's two hours of work? Next one. 103, oh sorry, 93 isn't it? 72, 93, one after that, 114, one after that, 135, one after that, 146, one after that, 157, oh sorry, 167. Oh wait, sorry, 156, add on 21. So we add on 21 to 156. 177, add on another 21. 198, add on another 21. 200 and 19, add on another 21. And you get 200 and 30. Is that right? Add on 21 each time. Okay, so the, the charge would be 230. All right. Can anybody tell me a different way of doing that? Probably won't go into it. It's probably just best to count it up at the moment, alright? Because the way it doesn't start off at one hour, it starts off at zero hours. Okay, we'll try another one. Hope this one should be less complicated. It is less complicated. A fast growing plant is four centimeters in height when purchased. It grows two centimeters per day each day afterwards. So day one you're four centimeters, day two you're six, day three you're eight. What's this? Draw a graph to show the height of the plant for day one to day seven. Okay, so what we should do here is we should uh, write down our day. We'll do it in, in the corner here. So we write down our day and we write down our height. So here we go. What type of series is this, lads? Can I tell you what type of series it is? A linear, a linear or what's, what else is it called? It's an arithmetic series, okay? So, we have to do seven different heights. N equals one, this one. N equals two. N equals three. N equals four. N equals five. N equals six. N equals seven. Okay, so there's our day and height. Okay, so what's day one, lads? Call it out for me. Day one is? Two. Two? A height of two? Okay. Okay. Sorry, it's four, yeah. Day two? Day three? Four? Ten? Five? Twelve? Six? Fourteen? Seven? Sixteen? Okay. What I'd like me to do next is, uh, I'd like me to draw a graph of this, okay? So what we need to do is we need to get some graph paper over here. I'm going to draw a graph of this. I'll fit it in over this side, all right? And I'll make, it'll be really small, but it'll do the trick. Okay, so what we're going to do here is the following. Just do a line going downwards and a line going across. How many days do I need on the bottom? 
seven. So one, two, three, four. Make sure the gap between each one is the same. Five, six, and seven. Please label it. That's the number of days. Okay. How high do I have to go up? Sorry? 18. So just go up in twos. So just go two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, 12, 14, 16, and go up to go 18. What's this called, guys? Height in. It's height of plant in centimeters. Now I've got to draw my graph. When you're drawing your graph, keep the points really small. So on day one, what height am I? Six. Day two? Eight. Oh, sorry, day one is four, excuse me. Now, there's a really easy way of doing, drawing an arithmetic series, okay? The really easy way of drawing an arithmetic series is just to do the first point. Yeah? See the way the gap is the same every time? Yeah? That means it's a straight line. So if I do the first point and the last point, 7 and 16, do you see it? If I do the first and the last point, I would draw a line linking them together. Yeah, just keep drawing the line through. You're meant to stop here though, you can keep drawing the through. Right? All I've got to do now is. Guys, I have to make sure I'm drawing all the dots. So all I have to do now is just go up and see where two hits the line. See the way it automatically hits at the number six now. See the way that happens. Two goes up to six. Three goes up to eight. Four goes up to ten. Five goes up to twelve. Six goes up to fourteen. Now I could have done I could have done that without my line. All right, but it's better to do the first and the last point, then draw them together, okay? What's the next part of this question? How many days will it take the plant to reach a height of 30 centimeters? How would you go about doing that? Sorry? You could count up, wouldn't you? Can anybody else suggest another way of doing this? What type of series is this again? Sorry? Linear. So it's going two, sorry, it's going four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Okay? And this is going across two, 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 and two. Okay, guys. Yes, let's use T of N. What is the formula for T of N? The, the original T of N, not the quadratic T of N. A plus N minus 1 times D. T of N therefore is, what's A? What's D? T of N therefore is 4 plus 2N minus 2. T of N equals 2n, 2n plus 2. We want to find out how big it is on the which day? Oh, sorry. We want to find out how many days it will take to reach 30. What does that mean? Does that mean t 30 or t of n equals 30? All right, it means t of n equals 30. What number of days will give you 30? What does t 30 mean? What is the height on the 30th day or the 30th term? So let's put this equal to 30. Bring over the two. What does that turn into? And therefore, n will equal 14. 14 days, okay? We also could have done this, couldn't we? We could have said, we could have said, uh, count upwards, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. 
this was the seventh day. 16 was the seventh day. That's the eighth day. That's the ninth day. That's the, twen uh, the tenth day. 11, 12, 13, and 14. Two different ways of getting the same answer. Both are work full marks. What happens if it wasn't 30 centimeters? What happens if it was something like 100 centimeters? Would we be able to count up that far well with big loss in time? No. Okay. Next one. All right. The plant will stop growing when it reaches a height of 60 centimeters. How many days will this take? Are we going to count all the way up to 60? It's a bit time. It takes up a bit too much time. So what we can say is for this question, which is which part is this question? Part three. We can say for part three is T n equals 60. Therefore, 2n plus 2 equals 60, and 2n equals 58, because it comes a minus 2 over the other side. n is equal to 29. It takes 29 days for it to go all the way up to 60. Okay, part 4. What is the slope of the line I have drawn? Okay, the, the slope of the line I have drawn. What you need to do is you need to mark off two points. Excuse me guys, two points on this. What's the first point? Can anybody tell me? One four. X one is one, Y one is four. What's the last point? Seven. 16. Call this x2, y2. We're expecting the slope. The slope of the graph is usually the same as the difference. Do you got it? Slope of the graph is usually the same as the difference. So what are we expecting the slope to be? 2. Because it goes up 2 every time. Let's find this out. Slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Uh, y2 should be on the bottom here. Okay, so let's figure this out. 16 minus 4 divided by 7 minus 1. That is 12 over 6. Is 12 over 6 too? So the slope always equals how much you're changing by. Okay? So yes, it does. What's the rate of... What's the slope of line you drew? 2. What is the rate of change of the growth in the table? It's 2. What's the connection between your answer in 4 and 5? The slope equals the rate of change. That's the key thing to remember. Slope equals the rate of change. Okay, doke guys. The sequence in this question is referred to as an exponential sequences. Exponential sequences take on the form. I'll give you an example of an exponential sequence before we begin. One exponential series would be 2, 4, 8, uh, 16, 32, 64, 128. What are you, know, what are you noticing about the gaps each time? What's up with the gaps guys? They're getting multiplied by 2 each time and they're becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. This is an example of an exponential series. Now, exponential series is basically power series. For example, if I said 2 to the power of n, the first term is 2 to the power of 1 is 2. The second term is 2 to the power of 2 which is 4. The next one is 2 to the power of 3 which is 8. 2 to the power of 4 this is an example of an exponential sequence. Another example of an exponential sequence would be 3 to the power of n. What's 3 to the power of 1? 3. What's 3 to the power of 2? 3 to the power of 3. What's the next one? 3 to the power of 4 is 81. What's the next one? 3 to the power of 5? 243. What's the one after that? 3 to the power of 6, which is? 729. 
Okay. Investigate if the second difference is constant. Let's see if the second difference is constant. I don't think it is. We will see. This is testing if it's quadratic. We want to find out if it's quadratic or not. Let's find out. 3, 9, 27, 81. That should be enough to test it out. The first gap is 6. The second gap is 18. The third gap is 54. 54. Is the second gap the same this time around? Second gap is 12, and the second gap between that one is 36. The second differences aren't the same, are they? Therefore, it's not a quadratic. They're not. Explain why the second difference is not quadratic. Why is the second difference not quadratic? Oh, sorry, why is the sequence not quadratic? The second difference aren't constant. Describe one feature of an exponential graph. Let's try drawing this, guys. Okay, let's try drawing this out. See what happens to us, alright? So, what we're going to try and draw now is this n equals 1. Oh, sorry. The first term is any, uh, we're going to write down the terms. T1 is what? 3. T2 is? 9. T3? 27. T4 guys? 81. And T5? 243. Let's see what's happening here. Okay, so we're just going to quickly draw. ourselves an xy axis and see what happens here that's going to be t1 this is t2 this is t3 this is t4 this one here is t5 i'm gonna to have to put numbers on this we're gonna call we're gonna go up in tens okay so this is going to be 20 40 60 80 100 120, 140, 160, 180, 200, 220, and 240. Let's see what happens. The first one is the number 3, isn't it? It barely leaves the axis, doesn't it? It's basically on the axis. The second one is how much? Number 9, right? That's down here. The third one is 27. 27 is just below 30. The fourth one is 81, which is basically just on the 80 mark. And the fifth one is 243. What you know about this curve? Sorry, Mr. Kenny, for one second. Sorry, one second. Okay. This one here, guys, look at it. It's a big. Do you see the curve on it? See the way it's a curve and not a straight line? This is what an exponential series looks like. Sir, yeah. Isn't that third one uh, below? Twenty-seven. It's below thirty. It is below thirty. That's four. The in between one is thirty. Okay. Hi right, guys.